German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said on Monday that about 90% of the revenue generated by frozen Russian assets should go to buying weapons for Ukraine, supporting a European Union proposal to use interest payments on Russian assets to boost Ukrainian defence. In view of the current situation, it was important that we took a new decision to strengthen the European peace facility and combined this with the announcement that the funds available there can be used not only for the procurement within Europe, but also outside Europe. Because what really matters now is that weapons can be delivered as quickly as possible, and not that this only happens once a new factory has been built. We have that to do too. In March, the European Union's foreign policy chief, Josep Borrell, proposed taking 90% of revenues from Russian assets frozen in Europe and transferring them to an EU-run fund that finances weapons for Ukraine. Russia is trying to, uh, threat, uh, to threaten all of us, so it has been uh, always uh, the same way, it doesn't change. And now they have uh, the main targets, the nuclear weapons, and uh, they're trying to push the button because we know the Ukrainian peace summit is coming, so they're trying to threaten those countries which are maybe now just thinking about going to Ukrainian peace summit, so they, show, uh, they are showing their uh, power. But uh, as you may see from this uh, today's our discussion, uh, we know that not just we have to work with the NATO, but we have to strengthen European Union's military abil abilities. Russia has threatened with the nuclear arms before, and uh, so far these have been only threats. Can we tell for certain that he's not going to use them? No, we can't, because they have done all, the, all sorts of crazy things before. Uh, but uh, we must understand why uh, they are making these threats, to make us refrain from the decisions that we would otherwise make. So I think uh, we shouldn't uh, give in to that. Thank you. Of course, with, um, with the decision of German government, there are more issues that we need to take account, mainly civic infrastructure, but I think our ministries of defense are on a very good track of finalizing this, uh, this agreement, and we will be able to uh, sign the, the relative documents and ratify the, uh, the documents related to status of uh, German, uh, German Brigade Lithuania uh, in the parliament uh, this fall. So uh, this is a top priority for my government. We are progressing in a very high speed, and uh, I have no doubt that uh, we will make it a story of success. Moreover, we have a consensus in Europe that we want to utilize the windfall profits from Russian frozen assets. This is a considerable amount, amounting to several billion a year, and we have also reached an agreement there, which is currently being finalized, that we also want to use around 90% of these funds for Ukrainian defense purposes, and that there is no commitment to procurement in Europe. Two important statements that are very, very significant in this respect, and now it is important that everyone looks again at what they can do, because now, in particular, there is also the decision to be made to utilize your own options for action from your stocks, just as we have now done with the third Patriot system. Some 70% of all Russian assets are mobilized in the West are held in the Central Securities Depository Euroclear in Belgium, which has the equivalent of 190 billion euros worth of Russian central bank securities and cash. Germany and the three Baltic states are pushing for a rapid expansion of arms production in Europe. Schultz said, adding production of ammunition and air defence systems had already been increased.